I'm not gonna lie, it was um, just lemon foam and uh, yeah, halibut basted and squid ink and oh, yeah? absolutely. So this here is a main kitchen. So if we're talking about canning, this is the last little bit of service. Uh, hey guys, going through some pickling. Oh wow. Uh, a big part of the operation is here. Tristan is uh, the sous chef on this side. Uh, so he and uh, Adam will receive the uh, salmon. Uh, uh, and we're going to have a little bit of green bread. So here's Jenny right here. Jenny. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Jenny is now 80 years old. Wow. So, uh, Do you ever worry about, uh, like, the, can, can these things ever just actually die out? You have it out too long or have it too they cold? They won't really die. When we're not keeping them, we'll, we'll retard them in the fridge. Yeah. And then when we bring them out, they're in use so much. That yeah, they go and suspend, suspend the animation and then, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So, this area actually uh, is also the hub for all our culinary classes. Oh, wow. So well, side, you have to do culinary classes here as well? Yeah, so, on the other side of the small is another room that can facilitate up to 26 Oh wow. So we'll stand up here and uh, take like uh, five course. This uh, asparagus mustard I, I can smell the asparagus. It's very, uh, very. Uh, uh, so we, do, we take uh, make our own mustards from scratch uh, with all the mustard seed and just grind down into the uh, asparagus and with it. So it, we really try to minimize waste. So we're very diligent with our um, analytical impact on landfills, that kind of thing. Not a lot of, yeah. Yeah, composting programs are really big here, but we're also taking things like, uh, I don't know, we're making peeling carrots, for example. We're peeling carrots, we take that peeling and we'll dry it out. Yeah. And then we use that to crumble it down into a powder and use that as we can see from here to make carrots. Yeah. It tends to find flavors, but again, minimizing our impact. Well, that was one thing about the, uh, the American Academy, right? The one we went to, Margot Talbot, was all about, uh, like, the whole American Academy being very self sustainable. Yeah. So everything that they were serving were all stuff that they were growing, yeah. and only the the animals were the ones that they were bringing in externally. Yeah, we're pretty close to that yeah. it was that was that was impressive. But um, I can't remember what it was called. It was a, it was the Rome Sustainable Food Project, and that was a project that Margot started at the American Academy. Yeah, so I mean, we're we're big advocates of that same system. You know, like if, if more restaurants got on board, I think we'd see a really big impact on the global scale. Uh, Ocean Rise. Yeah. So, let's see an example right now is the halibut fishery. Yeah. So, obviously we're going to use the halibut because it's at its peak right now, but one of the other things is that's the bycatch program. So, a bycatch from halibut is quite often in the wrong place. Right. So, we'll take elements like that and introduce them into the menu so that when the fishermen are on the boats, they're bringing the halibut and bycatch with the octopus. Do you know what bycatch means? Yeah. Bycatch is like when they're, when they're fishing for halibut and so forth. The bycatch is all the stuff that comes up with the nets, yeah. right? The byproduct, <laughs> byproduct, bycatch. So what we want to do is we want to create a market for that, right? So yeah. the fishermen are just throwing them back in the water yeah. and that kind of thing. So we, we provide a great Yeah. Like, unfortunately, some of the bycatch you see have some controversial stuff, like dolphins and sharks. And the shark ones is, is a big problem as well. A lot of sharks get caught in the bycatch. And there's nothing you do much with sharks, so a lot of these animals get dumped back in the sea dead and decaying and so forth. Yeah, so this, this is actually a very busy hub, so you can see some of the breads. We make bread twice a day, wow. okay, so yeah. lunch service and dinner service. Uh, they change all the time, just depending on what the bread makers feel like making. Yeah, the sourdough with the yeah. lunch we had was very good. Oh, you have your menu, Indian, uh, that's cool. We've got the different menus that's, there. That's it. we're doing a class of Tuesday night, actually. Oh, really? Is there a coffee-based pattern for you? Oh, nice. Last night we had a, uh, a group in, what we did was we took these pattern three, so we have one made from Oculus, right. our flagship one, Perpetua, and Martin's Lane, Pinot Noir. Oh, wow. So what we did was we took um, a map of the open probably right. a six foot by four foot map, uh, north to south, Yeah. and then basically built these into the shape of like a wine bottle, and then put them over top of their corresponding vineyard sites, so the group that came in, they were from all over the place, right. you know, showing them you know, a good sense of where we Okay. You want to try one? No. Okay. Oh, really good. Oh, oh, lost my pen. I lost my pen. So this here is what we call the variety. 
bridal guard. So yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how effective your um, your keypad is. <laughs> you can just reach around and throw a switch. Yeah. High security. Yeah, high <laughs> security operation. Yeah. So this area, it's kind of divided into two main parts. This side here is all curbs for the entire restaurant. So right. we're not buying them in, we just throw them on site. And it's great for the young cooks that are coming in here. They get a real sense of what a farm looks like and fresh food. Right? Because most of them, they're, they're coming from a large city. Yeah. They're getting stuff that's yeah. coming specifically out of a truck, and that's that's the only way they can associate fresh food. So they yeah. here, pick it themselves, you know, uh, realize how quickly things grow, and the windows for them when they're optimal, yeah. like when they're at their peak ripeness, yeah. uh, that's really key for, for showing them the right way to work in this industry, I think. And then this side, this is the bridal garden. So this is essentially sectioned off into six sections. So on the bottom we've got uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, then we've got Sauvignon Blanc and Syrah, right. and then here is Riesling and Merlot. So everything within these little blocks are all key affinities with each one of those varietals. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's also a very um, uh, educational area, so we'll bring guests out here sometimes and we'll bring them out with a glass of Riesling, let's say, and let them try some sweet Sicily or peaches when they're in, you know. So you actually match these kind of herbs and so forth with the actual wines as yeah. well. Well, this is, this is our, that's corners, that's paramount to what we do in the culinary program here. Oh, wow. So our job is when we're deciding on what a menu looks like, mm -hmm. we'll receive a menu of the wines first. Yeah. So most of my team has wine training. So you get the wine list first, right. and then you have to pair the food. We'll build the dishes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. It just shows you, like, in the tasting menu, how critical wine pairings are. Absolutely. Yeah. Make a break of wine. <laughs> exactly. Well, one thing about Brian did is that, um, uh, and just kind of um, singling out what he did in difference, because there's quite a few, a few places do do wine, I do tasting, about three or four tasting menus and so forth. But his was the only one where the price listed included the wine pairing. You couldn't get mm -hmm. the chef's menu without wine pairing. It was right. crucial. Yeah. Like a lot of places, always oh, $65 for the tasting menu, it's a 95 with the wine pairing. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the uh, Teatro, it was like 185, like 200 and something with the wine pairing. Yeah. But uh, Brian's tasting menu, there was no option. You got, you got wine or you didn't, it's kind of thing. Uh, it's another level that I don't think really a lot of people think about. Yeah. And it plays a very vital role in yeah. the success of a dinner. Yeah, exactly. So, definitely Sauvignon Blanc territory. Yeah? Yeah. So, these are not right, but I like them on the really, <laughs> I like the city things. Yeah. So, what do you guys use those flowers in? Those are marigolds. You can eat them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He was commenting the fact the one of the uh, the asparagus had actually a little edible. Edible pansy. Pansy. Yeah. 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 Pansies are edible. Yeah. 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 We use calendula, rose, and what else is around? Pretty much any of whenever they, when all of these are flowering, we use them. Yeah. So like tomato flowers. Right. But all the time, it's good to know here because most of our staff walk in this direction, right, when they're right. coming into work. So they can in here and have a look around and see how things are progressing and taste things and yeah it really it really gets them thinking about uh about dishes that they want to make well that's the difference i mean especially with talking with uh, i can't remember her name now from salted brick the fact that you have this extremely passionate chef mm -hmm. and that's one thing was that when you're when you're going to a restaurant regardless of who's owning it you can always tell who has the passion mm -hmm. who's constantly being creative which is the reason why i got to be good friends with ryan sear at white i'm not sure the name's familiar but ryan sear um like I said, Ryan and Brian are very much cut of the same cloth. You talk, get them talking about food, and that's mm -hmm. it. That's yeah. it. That's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. It seems like to a lot of these people, it's, it's, a, it's a great, it's a love, but there's a level of passion that's very, very unique, and Ryan has a good point to the fact that, I mean, you, you'll sit him down and talk about food, and he'll just go crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. actually really, really impressive. We had, um, I was trying to get Brian to come down to, um, every year we do this kind of northern taste challenge, yeah. where we had Bob Bloomer. I came oh, right. down last yep. time, and he was the MC, and we had a whole bunch of the, write that off, a whole bunch of the, uh, of the chefs kind of competed in kind of an Iron Chef cook-off with a bunch of secret ingredients. Uh, we had North, we had, uh, North 54, uh, Twisted Cork, um, uh, White Goose, and a few others, and White Goose ended up winning the day, and I was like, Brian, you got to come down for this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, get, get, because unfortunately it was like six chefs, but three of them were the only ones that really mattered. We had a couple of people come in, like the, like the, the chef that did the catering for the Ramada was there. Yeah. But they get, they get, honestly, they get knocked off pretty quick. And it came down to just those yeah. three guys. But it's good exposure for them as well. Oh, it's great exposure. Yeah. But uh, the funny thing was about two years, about a year before, 
I listed my list on my on my blog of the top three restaurants in Perth Storage, mm -hmm. and I listed White Goose, uh, North Fifty Four, and Twisted Cork, mm -hmm. and uh, or is it Twisted Cork North Fifty Four? Twisted Cork North Fifty Four, North, yeah. And then of course when the uh, when this competition happened, first, second, and third place was the exact same order. Oh, so good. I was like, I felt a little vindicated, but yeah, yeah it shows you. But oh, um, if you ever come that come to the Prince George, yeah, yeah, check out White Goose. Check out Twisted Court, Door 54, and hopefully Brian gets on his feet after the yeah. closure of Nichaco. Yeah. And he has his place, but we're I will... We're sad to see him go, but it's good to hear that he's doing well and uh, taking some lessons that he learned yeah. from us, I guess. Well, we, we ate at uh, Bouchon's yesterday. Oh, yeah. I, said, I sent a message to Brian. He was like, hey, I was there for, for, for a few days. I'm like, for a few days? Would you punch the maitre d' or yeah. something? He's like, no, no, it was, just, it was just a temporary gig, but it was just funny the way he's... But yeah, I worked there for a few days, mm -hmm. so... But we we're gonna go to um, I guess it was uh, uh, Vin oh, um, water water. Waterfront wines. Oh, yeah, waterfront wine, which is right next door. Yeah. But they were just packed. Yeah. So we couldn't get in there. So I'd say that's my favorite restaurant. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I it, really, I really enjoyed Mark's. It food. really shows to you that TripAdvisor doesn't have the proper pulse. Like you go to TripAdvisor to talk. Don't even get me started. Yeah, I can imagine <laughs> just like them and Yelp. You get them as a certain guy. Like the Vancouver, the number one restaurant rated on there is Vijas. Yeah. And that's actually rather justified. It, it, yeah. it is a legitimately, I mean, Vikram Beach is a class act, very good yeah. chef, great restaurant. Um, Are you familiar with the number one restaurant in the world currently in Noma? Or in Copenhagen, sorry, Noma? I, I know of it. Yeah. So Noma is the number one on the San Pellegrino Top 50. Yeah. And it's rated, I think, 49th in Copenhagen. Really? Yeah. On trip, yeah, it, 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 go, it goes to show you. Um, like, I was in the home tasting room in Calgary. This yeah. is when I first started drinking wine. Well, three years ago. Yeah. Three years ago, I started drinking wine, yeah. which is insulting because I'm Portuguese. And, and like my